And uh, all right. And uh, so what I do, I, do, I am not uh, just so for those of you who don't know, I'm not streaming live to Facebook. I uh, just because I want to make sure that nothing is said, you know, during our recording that is private or sensitive. Um, I, I so I don't want to do that live. But uh, the plan is, of course, Lord willing, that I would um, post this to the table Facebook page sometime later this evening after we're done. Uh, also, um, for Tache and others that, that may not know or need a reminder, uh, the lesson itself will be about 55 minutes or so, top of the hour. And then I stay on for up to another hour or two that's open discussion, Q&A time about tonight's topic or any topic that you want to talk about, and I will do my best to answer it. It's also just a wonderful time of, of fellowship, iron sharpening iron, getting to know one another. Um, again, I know um, for us, you know, when we're done here at eight o'clock Pacific time, it's a, I'm usually ready for dinner and, and some of y'all in the East Coast are ready for <laughs> bedtime. <laughs> uh, we want to be sensitive to that, but I do encourage you, if you're up to it, to stay on for that second that second hour. We always have a rich time uh, on top of a wonderful lesson. So I see uh, Yvette nodding her head. Thank you, Sister Yvette. All right, so let's go ahead and open up in, in prayer. Lord, we dedicate this time to you. We lift up this time to you, this Bible study, Father, and our fellowship together. We want this night to, in this time together, to be a time that glorifies you, that points to you, that puts the focus on you. Put our flesh aside, um, uh, myself as, as the uh, teacher and also um, anyone else that is participating. And we just wanna just uh, truly devote our, our hearts, minds, souls, and even our strength into hearing what you would have us to hear and learn from tonight's lesson. We, uh, most of all, Father, just are so grateful for salvation through your son, Jesus Christ. Uh, we cannot thank you enough for that. Um, and we want to make sure we are mindful of it every minute of every day. We also ask, Father, that you just give us wisdom. Help us to be wise daughters of you. Help us to be women that truly are uh, at looking to be women after your own heart, Father. We need your Holy Spirit. Uh, to do that, to remind us of that on our day-to-day, -day, Father. Uh, we seek wisdom. That's why we get together. That's why we, we uh, search your word, and that's why we rely on it more than anybody, anything else. Thank you for your word, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, I'm going to let Sister Corinne in. Yeah. And all right. Um, so welcome, everybody. Uh, what everybody? Do you have um, notes or anything? Who takes notes? Well, you're going to take notes some notes tonight if you don't. Usually, if you don't mind, uh, so if you could get a pen and a and some paper, and I want you to write down something. So I'll give you uh, 20 seconds <laughs> to get a pen and paper, or you can use your your notes in your in your uh, smartphone or your tablet. Whatever you if want you're to do. driving. Unfortunately, I can't take notes on driving. Yeah, I thought so. That's yeah. okay. Thank you, Miss Sherry. Looking out for Corinne. Hi, Corinne. Yeah. That's hi. Welcome. Hello, hello. So we're gonna also um let uh, Keisha once Keisha is good to go. There she is. Um so hi Keisha. Represent Gardena, California. <laughs> um, and April. Hey. And hey, April. I'm sorry, honey. How are you doing? And Shalene, too. And Shalene. Oh, my God. Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi. All right. I mean, thank you. She's Sherry's, Sherry, uh, you know, Sherry's got my six, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> and hello, Shannon. Hello. Yeah, welcome, welcome. So what I'm asking everyone to do is get a pen and a piece of paper. And now here's what I want you to write down. <clears throat> Think of one thing, your, your big, one of your biggest areas of struggle in life. 
You don't have to, you know, write a paragraph, just, you know, a few, a, a, a word, a, a sentence. Mm -hmm. um, and, and just what, what is one of your biggest struggles in your life right now? Okay, I'll give you another 20 seconds to write that down. And it could be anything, it's up to you. I will say that you're not going to share it tonight with anybody else, at least not, not here. Praise uh, God. <laughs> did you say praise God? Yeah. Yes, I did. Yeah, um, we're not going to share it here, but I do want you to kindly write it down. Okay, uh, is 20 seconds up? Nah, we'll just say it's up. So now the next thing I want you to do is uh, looking for uh, volunteers to share briefly. Not share what it is that you wrote down, or what your, your one of your biggest struggle is, but look and thinking about one of your biggest struggles, answer these questions. Who do you feel most comfortable talking to about this struggle? Why? Who wants to answer that? You don't have to share what the struggle is, but who in your life, in your particular life, comfortable to talk to about this struggle. Uh, Toretta, I'm sorry, what did you say? Um, you said who? Who? And why? Who and why? Uh, I'll volunteer. Um, I share with my um, with my cousin and my husband and um, I share with them because um, they help hold me accountable and um, I'm most comfortable with them and they also pray for me so it's not just a release of whatever it is but it's also a opportunity for me to get support on getting over those things that I struggle with. Thank you Toretta, thank you very much. Uh, somebody else want to share? I'll share. Okay, sure. <laughs> it's you, Corinne, and April. Um, and there's three of you, so I don't wear one of you out. <laughs> and because you pray for me and you draw me closer to the Lord, you refocus me, although I don't feel like I should have to be refocused, but... Um, I think a good friend, a good Christian friend is going to draw you to greater dependence on the Lord instead of them. And so I may need to call you a lot less at certain times. And that's because it gives me the opportunity to grow in the Lord and to seek his word and, and to be grateful for the times when I can call you. Okay. That's beautiful. And, and praise God. Um, it's just by the by the grace of God that, and I'm sure Corinne and April would agree that, you know, just he, he equips us and, and gets us ready. And and I, I think it's good that you have more than one person because <laughs> I, I, I don't know, Sherry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I have another question, unless somebody else wants to share. You're welcome. I was just gonna say that for me personally, um, right now, in th at this time, mm -hmm. I've got one, and that's my husband. Okay. Um, and I think the why would be because we're newly married, just um, August, and. Congratulations. Thank you, Thank you so much. Congratulations. <laughs> and I'm in this weird place where alone it seems strong, but there's a falling away. There's a there's a pruning that's happening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I 
yeah, I think that contributes to the why. Okay. And that, you know, we all have those, I hate to sound cliche and use buzzwords, but seasons. I know. I, did you hear right. me not tr trying to say that? <laughs> I, I did not either, want but... to use that word. <laughs> But mm -hmm. you know what? It's still, it's still, you know, I'm not using it because it's trendy. I'm using it as a as a great way to describe mm -hmm. it's exactly Absolutely. what you're describing, right? Yeah. Um, hello, Natasha, and who else just joined? Maybe that oh Laverda. Hi, Laverda. Howdy. Thank you. Hi, ladies. Hi. Uh, great. Everybody can hear us. It's nice to have you all here together. So I, I just asked, well, first we started out, everybody write down one area of struggle, like what's, what's one of your biggest struggles? So we did that. And, uh, and then I said, without sharing what that struggle is, because we're not going to, you know, uh, share that information. Um, I just wanted you to write it down. Then I asked the, the first question I, wanted, I asked was, who do you feel most comfortable talking to about it and why? And so a few of the ladies gave, uh, have been giving their, their answers to that question. My next question is, who do you feel least comfortable talking to about it and why? Please don't name names, <laughs> okay? Or let me, maybe I should rephrase it this way so you're not, so we don't make the mistake of mentioning names. <laughs> but um, is there, anybody in your life that you know that you would not share this struggle or go to that person for advice on this struggle? Yes or no? Or wave of hand or? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, and, and why? And can please be careful, you know, we are recording, we want to be sensitive. So who wants to say why? My why is because um, I feel like, that person wouldn't give me um, biblical advice and it would be very uh, personally subjective to their experiences um, and I'm no longer in a comfortable space to share anything intimate or personal. Okay. So I'm driving but I want to interject with my why. Yes. I won't name the person but the person that that I'm thinking of shares everyone's business Ooh. and yeah shares everyone's business and I would not feel comfortable because I think she would do me the same way mm. what's what's the saying if if they gossip with you they gossip about you mm. yeah that then that that's key thank you Corinne for that um here's another question what kinds of things do you need from the person you're, you confide in or that you seek advice or help from? What, what makes them helpful? Like, so we talked about prayer. Um, we talked about uh, confidentiality, uh, being biblically accurate, you know, telling the true biblical truth, uh, refocusing you back to the Lord. Anybody want to add anything else to that list? What what kinds of things do you need from that person that you feel comfortable confiding in? What qualities, what, what, um, what makes you feel comfortable? Discretion. Mm -hmm. Honesty. Trust. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I need a safe place. I, sometimes yeah, some people use what they learn to, against you. <laughs> or, they, or they compete, you know, they, they yeah. They want to compete with you and it'll be brought up later on in another mm -hmm. conversation. Yeah, they mm -hmm. weaponize it, right? They weaponize it, exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. that's a new word I learned recently. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try not to use it too much. <laughs> oh, I like that, I'm gonna write that down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, that's good, April. Um, that's, I asked this question, I wanted to start us getting our, our juices flowing about how to help a hurting friend, okay? And what we're going to learn tonight is us, you and me, lay women who love the Lord, and we want to uh, follow the admonition in Titus 2, verses 3 through 5, about the older women teaching the younger women. Now, um, just kind of for review, 
let's turn to let's all turn to second timothy chapter 4 verse 1 and when you're there say hallelujah um second timothy uh, chapter 4 verse one, i'm going to read verses 1 through 5 and again this is just a quick review but we uh, i'm going to just go ahead and start reading out of the kjv I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick or the living and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and be turned unto fables but verse five but you watch in all things endure afflictions do the work of an evangelist make full proof of your ministry so uh two uh topics ago we talked about preach the word there in that passage uh, starting in, in verse two preach the word we talked about how even though this is a, the Apostle Paul writing a letter to uh, young Timothy, who um, who is a leader of, of a local church, and, and Paul is basically giving Timothy instruction, um, we know that uh, we talked about in that lesson how that preach the word isn't just for pastors. It isn't just for women's Bible study teachers. We all are... Um, called to proclaim the greek word for that the word is is basically proclaiming the gospel we're all called to do that so we talked about that then we talked about uh, we went from preach the word to fulfill your ministry as we see in verse five it closes make full proof of your ministry or, or in other words fulfill your ministry as other translations say and we talked we talked at length about okay what does that mean Everybody is called to uh, and equipped to uh, for a particular individual ministry that God has given you. Um, for me, it's a ministry just to teach women. I love to teach women and use my writing skills that he's given me in order to, to do that. Um, it could be, I think we talked about Sherry, how she, she loves greeting cards and she's very crafty with her hands. And so that is a ministry that, that she is called to. Somebody else, it may be hospitality. Um, I know Toretta has a gift for administration, being very organized and, and, and planning. So we all have our call to some kind of individual ministry. But then after that, when we started looking at uh, last time, teach good things. Um, we are all, especially women, we are called to teach good things. And we looked at that last week. Um, so... But here's, here's the key, the importance of all three of these things, preach the word, fulfill your ministry, and be teachers of good things, or be in good things, as we learned last week, is be teachers of good doctrine, or sound doctrine. The importance of these three things in light of the fuller context of, uh, especially 2 Timothy chapter 3, um, why don't, if we can just turn there. Second Timothy chapter three, I won't read all of it, but I do want to read, I'm just going to read quickly uh, chapter three, verses one through seven. And you'll see how this all ties in. This, all, this know also that in the last days, perilous times will come for men shall be lovers of their own selves. Are we seeing that today, ladies? Mm -hmm. Covetous or, or greedy. Yeah, boasters, mm -hmm. blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent or um, lack of self control, fierce despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away verse six verses six and seven are real key to us as women for of this sort okay from verses one through five that's the sort 
<laughs> that Paul is, tell, is talking to Timothy about. Mm-hmm. Of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with uh, divers of various lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. So preach the word, ladies. Fulfill your ministry, ladies. And be teachers of good things or sound doctrine to one another. These things are so key because we are in these last days. Yeah. Talking about. And we, and uh, let's turn to, um, let me make sure I'm following my notes. We have to come back to what we're seeing. Um, and we have to make sure I am, sorry about that, ladies. Uh, we have to come back. What what is being described in Second Timothy chapter three, and what we're seeing in our world right now, by first of all knowing the gospel, knowing what what we believe and why we believe it, uh, preaching the gospel, sharing and witnessing the good news of Jesus Christ, salvation in, in Jesus Christ, fulfilling our excuse me our individual callings, and then teaching each other sound doctrine so that. None of us is one of those silly women who, with these fools coming and creeping into our houses and leading us captive. And we have to love each other enough to help each other make sure that doesn't happen. We, yeah. Just for us, but for each other as well. So now, turn to, we're going to be turning to a lot of scriptures, but turn to Titus 2, verses 3 through 5. And you'll, um, I'm just tying all this in as part of the review. So in Titus chapter two, verses three through five, they say the aged or the older women, likewise, that they be in behavior as becomes holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, um, teachers of good things. And we looked at that teachers of good things last week, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, here's the key, that the word of God will not be blasphemed. Um, We have to do our part in protecting the gospel. So it's not just preaching it. It's not just serving in ministry and whatever our ministry is or calling. It's preaching, it's serving, and it's um, protecting the gospel. And as I said uh, last week, and I've said a couple of times this week uh, in the Wisdom Stable Facebook group, women teaching women is the power God gives us to keep his word from being made cheap. Okay, so this is a wonderful high calling that God has given us, whether it's, you know, at a, at, as a speaker at a conference or on a podcast or just, just you and a girlfriend over coffee. It's just as important. Doesn't matter who your audience is. That you know, God, God may not call all of us to have you know some some wide audience, and that's okay. Just put one hundred percent in that, uh, uh, concentration and effort into what He has called you to do, and do it cheerfully, and do it as unto the Lord, and He will get the glory. You will be rewarded for it. So. Um, now, after we have understood what being teachers of good things means, I wanted to talk about a, sub, a subset of that, which is how to help a hurting friend. And that's, that's our main topic tonight, how to help a hurting friend. So in, when we're um, talking with our friends, if somebody comes to us for advice, for help, they're struggling through something, uh, we want to make sure that we glorify God and how we serve that sister. Um, and especially when it comes to helping if they, if they are hurting, um, and it is a form of teaching, right? You, you are going to impart biblical knowledge, biblical wisdom. You don't, you know, have to do some soliloquy or, or an essay about it. It's just being there um, as a good Christian friend to a fellow sister. And on that note, I just want to say, make it clear, I know that uh, there are plenty of seminaries and other uh, institutions 
that provide a certification specifically in biblical counseling. So this obviously it is, this is just a lay person's, um, you know, hey, we're women coming together and talking about how can we help. We don't wait until you get your certification in order to be a good friend. It doesn't take a certification to be a godly good friend to a fellow sister in Christ who's struggling. Okay, you, they can't wait for you to get your certification. So that's why it's important. This is something that we are called to do and we are called to do it uh, now. You know, um, don't, don't ever think that God can't use you to minister to another sister or a younger, a younger woman, um, a neighbor, a cousin, a niece, a granddaughter, you know, whatever it may be, let God use you now according to his word about uh, being a teacher of good things so with that on this subject we probably will not cover everything i don't want to rush through it um, because it is so important but here here are the the main topics that i want to cover under how to help a hurting friend so first uh, tonight we'll go over the keys to biblical practical common sense advice what are keys to, to uh, being a good, a, a good uh, helper to a friend? Um, and, yeah. Uh, Yvette, did you have a question? Being a good listener. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to look at all of that. So um, we're going to look at the keys to biblical, practical, common sense advice. We're going to look at key scriptures that point specifically on uh, giving good advice. We're going to talk about practical tips and help. And Yvette just gave one, be a good listener. Absolutely. Um, and some advice, uh, some advice do's and don'ts for giving advice. And then dealing with the chronic complainer. Uh, that those are kinds of things that we want to talk about. Um, and so as I'm teaching, I, uh, I want you to please feel free to raise your hand and let me know if you have any questions. Um, you know, I'm pretty informal. Um, I take the word of God very, very seriously. Um, but I also, you know, I don't, I'm not here just to give a lesson and then not care about, okay, are they getting it? Are they understanding? Do they agree? Is there anything anywhere where they disagree? Do they, you know, how do you feel about it? Please feel free to raise your hand. Um, and I would love to, and I'm sure all of us would love to hear what you have to say or what your question may be, because others may have it as well. Put anything in the chat. Um, I'm not real good at walking and chewing gum at the same time. So um, like I, there's somebody, something, somebody put something in the chat. I'm going to ask Sherry, Sister Sherry, to just monitor that and let me know. Um, I just may not be able to see it, you know, because I'm, I don't know how to do more than two or three things at once. <laughs> Okie dokie. Thank you. All right. So any questions before we just dive right into the some keys to uh, how to help a hurting friend? Any thoughts, questions? All right. Laurel, one yes. thing. Yes. Um, for anyone who at this point couldn't really answer, your question about who do you go to because they're in that time in their life where they may not have someone. Um, just wanted to encourage their hearts that sometimes we go through those times where there is not someone that we can um, rely upon for whatever reason. And God is still with us. And he still listens, and he's still better than any friend. Mm -hmm. And it's a blessing to sometimes reach out to get Christian counseling until such time where you can have girlfriends again. Yeah. Thank you, Sherry. Thank you. That's that's excellent. Um, okay. Appreciate that. All right. So keys to biblical, practical, common sense advice. Uh, key passage, key scripture passage, which we did just read, Titus 2, verses 3 through 5. Women teaching women. Okay. Um, 
And I, I would suggest that you read that passage and you take to heart because again, ver the end of verse five says, so that the word of God will not be blasphemed. Other translations say, so that the word of God won't be cheapened, maligned, ill-spoken of. We did a, a, a teaching on that a while back. Um, yeah, take, take that to heart. This is the, the basis. There's other scriptures that we can point to um, but this is the basis for how to help a hurting friend. Uh, and then now, key titles. It's, this is about the who is giving advice. And as I mentioned, you don't have to be, you know, a teacher, a podcast host, or, or you know, a, a certified biblical counselor. Uh, you don't have to be this is about being helping or hurting friends, somebody that you know, somebody that feels comfortable to go to you. Um, but here's some other titles. There's counselors, mentors, can, are also those that give advice, uh, disciplers. Uh, here's some, some more titles, uh, mom, grandma, auntie, big sister, Okay, um, so you're getting getting the idea here. This is this uh, concept of helping a hurting friend applies to almost every single one of us in one way or another. Uh, key qualities, key qualities in giving advice. So this is from the perspective of of you as the one that's helping, doing the helping. Uh, give hope. Okay, a good um, advisor, a good friend who's trying to help her friend that's hurting will give hope. She will impart hope. Can someone turn to Romans 15, 13 and read that for me? For us? Romans 15, 13. And then after that, if someone could read Romans 16, 24. I've got okay. Romans 15. Okay, great. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. Yeah, read that first, that first uh, phrase again, or first sentence. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. The God of hope. He is yes. the God of hope. That's what we want to impart. That's one of the qualities that we want to be operating in when we are when we are trying to help our, uh, our friends. Excuse me. And who has Romans 16, 24? I'll read it. Okay. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. So it's, the, it's God's grace. We want to impart hope. We want to impart grace, unmerited favor, giving room for people to be hurting, basically, mm -hmm. um, without feeling like, oh, you know, um, oh, the situation is hopeless, or you know, boy, I can't believe they're they they think this is a problem, or don't they see that they cause a problem? You know. It's about grace. God gives us so much grace. We need to uh, give hope and impart grace to each other. Another key quality is keeping confidences. Corinne had mentioned this um, before. And um, Proverbs 16, somebody get to it before me, please go ahead and read it. Proverbs 16, 28. Who's going to beat you to it because I'm moving slow. <laughs> Proverbs 16, 28. Nobody? You guys want to make me read it? <laughs> okay. A forward man sows strife, and a whisperer separates chief friends or good friends. Okay. Um, <laughs> we did a, a lesson on ministry of shut up, and it was basically about gossiping. And, and, and then, as I said, Corinne mentioned this earlier, it is so important to, to 
when you're giving advice, when you're helping a hurting friend, that um, it is a safe thing to do. That you are providing a safe place, like April said earlier. Another key quality, we cannot give what we do not have. So have a heart for others. Be free and available. Okay. When you have a heart, you can share that heart and encourage another's heart through the problem or struggle they're going through and be friendly and available. Uh, have a listening heart, right, Yvette? Yep. Heart that's that just willing to listen, to gain information and look, listen for cues. And, 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 and it comes from the heart. But that's where our care comes from. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a mind thing too. be discerning, be listening. Um, but just remember heart, when you have a listening heart, it's a heart thing because that will, the love that you have, the, the Christ-like love that you have will put, put aside your flesh for the minute, just so you can hear and just be available. I want to be available to this sister. I want to help her. Um, so have a listening heart. Next, uh, we cannot give what we do not have. Be equipped with sound doctrine and wisdom. So if you do not know sound, doctrine, you cannot share sound doctrine, right? I mean, it's right. pretty obvious, pretty logical, but it's worth uh, uh, mentioning. Be equipped with sound doctrine and wisdom. Jerry had mentioned about being, you know, discretion, right? Being mm -hmm. discreet, using discretion, using wisdom, um, being pragmatic. That's that's uh, if if you don't know sound doctrine, you can't um, be as helpful as if you did know sound doctrine. Right. Um, and then here again, we cannot give what we do not have. Under that, live what you teach what you share do your best now i'm going to say you know sometimes i mean I, I can teach this and i don't always live it <laughs> what i should i'm i don't because <laughs> you know i'm just i'm just a human being that's not an excuse but it's reality um and i'm not going to beat myself up over it i'm just going to you know just keep striving to do my best and that's all god wants any of us to do mm -hmm. just um, live what we share, live what we teach. Okay. If you want to give a struggling sister some advice, uh, you know, is it, and it, and it can apply that advice can apply to you too. Make sure you're living it yourself. Okay. Right. The next key is key purposes. So there are several purposes for being a good helper, helper to a hurting friend. So one purpose is just being obedient to God, uh, to God's instruction in Titus 2, 3 through 5, as we just um, read through. So a key purpose to do, to be, to, excuse me, a key purpose to helping a hurting friend is just to obey God, and what, his, what his word instructs us to do so that the word of God will not be blasphemed, okay? Another key purpose is to give training to younger women for their betterment, for their growth, to increase wisdom, uh, to help their witness for the gospel, um, and to be a blessing to their loved ones. Um, so it's it's uh, to give training. Another purpose is just preparing each other for life. Um, you know, it, it's just like let's share, let's talk, let's be there for one another uh, in confidence, sharing hope, giving grace. Um, sharing sound doctrine, teaching sound doctrine, because life is tough. And, um, and we have to be on our guard and we have to be prepared for what life is, you know, is uh, like we, we saw in 2 Timothy chapter 3, in the last days, people are going to be like this. They're going to be like that. They're going to be jacked up people. Like, excuse my friend, but it's going to be jacked up. And we have to prepare one another. Okay, let's not be surprised by what's happening in the world, what's happening in our lives. 
you know, what's happening in our homes, uh, in our relationships, let, be prepared so you know how to handle it. And that will, and, and know how to still have hope in the midst of everything. And that's one of the purposes of, of um, properly helping a hurting friend. And uh, another purpose is uh, prevention of worsening or new problems. So if we're giving sound teaching and if we're properly helping one another, um, it's going to go a long way towards um, you know, improving the situation or at least not letting it get worse and perhaps giving that sister something to think about to, so that it won't happen again. You know, so it's, so it's uh, for prevention as well. And then lastly, a purpose is uh, repairing problems. Repairing problems. So, okay, you done, you done, you know, you have this problem, your sister, a good friend has a problem and they come to you and you want to be a good teacher and share wisdom with, with your hurting friend to fix, to try to fix whatever problem she is dealing with. Okay, so that, that's another purpose for it. Any questions so far on that? Okay, another key is key needs. So when we are giving advice, when we're being a shoulder to cry on, um, when we're, um, you know, just, just talking to a friend or some of someone, what are their foundational needs? Number one, are they saved? Do they know Jesus is Lord? Um, a lot of times people, you know, will in the, in the toughest times, they might be open to the Lord and they'll, you know, nod their head as you're sharing the gospel with them or they may be saying the right things, but then as soon as, you know, that struggle, they overcome that struggle, sometimes, sometimes they will, you know, next day they don't want to give God the time of day because they don't need, they don't need him anymore. Mm -hmm. A lot of, a lot of even professing Christians treat God like a spare tire, only thought of when you need it. Um, but we want to just, you know, listen and, and, and ask, you know, depending on the, um, as God would lead you in a particular conversation, but so salvation art, do you know Jesus? Cause you can spend all day giving scriptures and if they don't, if they don't have the Holy spirit abiding in them, it's just going to be, you know, that's going to fix it for now. And then the next thing, you know, they're, they're going to see a psychic, you know, because for the next problem, you know, so we want to make sure then salvation is about their, their, where they stand in relation to God, right? It's just, it's the, the standing that they have in, or don't have in Christ. Um, and this is where preaching the word, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2, preach the word, be ready in season, out of season. So when you're, when you're helping a hurting friend and you're talking with them, share the gospel, mention the gospel gauge kind of where she is um, in, in her standing or lack of with respect to God. And again, that takes you, you cannot give what you do not have. That takes you knowing what you believe and why you believe it, helping her to understand what she believes and why she believes it. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and then getting your, your hurting friend to a point of assurance of salvation. Um, so, and then the other need, the other key need is sanctification. And sanctification, in other words, is the state in terms of your walk with God. Where is your hurting friend's walk with God? Um, and this is, you know, it, it, it going, it's going to vary from one hurting friend to another in how you gauge that. Uh, do you, you know, sometimes you can ask a direct question. Sometimes you have to, you know, go around the back door <laughs> making that point, but it is salvation and sanctification are the two things that you want to keep in mind as you're trying to help a hurting friend. Where are they with the Lord? Where is their walk in the Lord? Uh, okay. And then now key question. It's very important to know or to just ask questions to gain information. 
the more information you gain from your hurting friend as to what she's dealing with, you know, um, what are the circumstances, who else is involved, whatever the, whatever the situation or struggle is, asking key questions. And, and the most key question to ask is why? Ask your, ask your hurting friend, why do you think that happened? Um, if she's married and it's, and it's a, or in a relationship and, it's, um, and her struggle is related to, to that relationship, ask, what do you think he was thinking when he said that to you? Or what do you think he was thinking when he did that to you? You know, the, just the, these are some of the examples of why do you think he might have? Why do you think that might have happened to you? Why, you know, and it's, and it's just, and let her answer. It's to get her juices flowing, why am I in this situation? Not so that you can beat her up or she beats herself up, but for that process of exposing everything and revealing everything that, that applies in the situation so that you know what to what to um, target and what not to when it when it's time to counsel her through the situation when it's time to help her and give her advice you'll know exactly um, how to target your advice to her uh, the next key is key truth if your hurting friend is hurting because of someone else here's the key truth even if it's no matter what what the cause is, whether it's her fault, somebody else did something to her, or it's just circumstances, she cannot change the circumstances. She cannot control anybody else that, that may be involved. Okay. She can't control God. Because sometimes when we pray about situations, he allows us to go through the situation to teach us and to grow us through it. He doesn't always take away our struggles. He allows us to go through them so that to teach us how to rely on him more and more. But here's the key. The key truth is the only thing that she can control is herself. The only thing that she can change in, in, in the middle of her struggle is how she reacts to it on the inside. How is she allowing herself to be moved, to be impacted? And I'm talking emotionally. Sometimes having a, another person listening, you know, can give us objectivity and our, but our emotions may get in the way. Um, it's about being sound minded in trying to, you know, take ourselves up in the helicopter and view the situation from a broader perspective and we have a better view. It may not be nearly as huge and bad as I as, as I thought it was. I mean, there there are ways to um, take a look at this that a hurting friend may not be aware of because they're just in the midst of of their feelings about it, and that's okay. God gave us emotions. God gave us feelings. We just have to work through them and not. And this is the key truth again. How are we allowing our feelings about our struggle overwhelm us? Are they throwing us off course? Or are they directing us more and more to God and the truth of his word? And um, as the advisor, the, uh, the, uh, the friend that wants to help our hurting friend, that part of our job is to guide them and direct them and remind them of that key truth. You can't control or change anybody or anything other than yourself. And we even need God's help to do that. Key tools. Here are some key tools uh, in, with, in the context of giving good advice to a hurting friend. Read God's word daily. Um, often what we read, we share, right? That sometimes I know I'm not the only one this has happened to, but you know, you read, you happen to read a, a certain passage one day and you know, the, the next, an hour later, two days later, a week later, you, and God puts you in a situation where he's going to bring, the Holy Spirit's going to bring that scripture that you just read to mind and it's going to hit the mark 
in helping a hurting friend at that moment. So be equipped with God's word, read God's word daily, pray daily. Uh, read a chapter of Proverbs every day of the month. And then when the 30 or 31 days, when you, you know, you start over again. But that is the book of wisdom, right? And that's going to help you be that wise woman that's going to impart wisdom to a hurting friend that's going to bless them and help them and help them grow. Uh, memorize key verses. And uh, Sherry, can I ask you please to just put in the chat the following verses? We're not going to uh, turn to all of them, but they're, I don't usually assign homework, but I do encourage you to read these on your own uh, throughout the week. Okay. Yes, the yes, Laverta, absolutely. Um, so some key, some uh, memorize these key verses. So we already looked at Titus 2, verses 3 through 5. And let me know if I'm going too fast, Sherry. Um, Isaiah 50, verse 4. We looked at Romans 15. Let's do 15, uh, 13 through 14. So Romans 15, 13, and 14. First John 1, verse 9. Ephesians 4, 31. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5. And then James 1, 19. These um, memorizing uh, verses, uh, I've said this before, but um, it really helps give the Holy Spirit something to work with um, when you have at your, at your ready in your mind, uh, like second Corinthians 10, 10, four and five, or actually, um, I've only memorized five, but, um, you know, casting down imaginations and every high thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to bring it to the obedience of Christ. That scripture is, is, is just one, you know, these other ones are, are wonderful too, just that comes to mind when okay i'm starting i can feel my emotions and making my thoughts start going over here and over there and everywhere but what the word of god says second corinthians 10 5 will come to mind take captive every thought to bring it to the obedience of christ um this it's a, a wonderful these scriptures and memorizing them just gives the holy spirit something to really work with and you see him moving because he'll bring those to your mind and when you're helping a hurting friend you can instruct her hey memorize these scriptures and just give her one at a time don't overwhelm her <laughs> she's already feeling overwhelmed that's why she's coming to you um but just get, get the word of god is medicine and when you have it in your your memory banks it, that medicine is is readily available uh there are key scriptures on on uh, giving sound advice um and as laverta just said you know the Proverbs is, is wonderful um, for this. And so most of these are in Proverbs. Um, so I'm going to give these to you and then we'll stop there. And then next week we will pick up on give the actual practical tips and helps. Um, like a bulleted list. Do this. Don't do that. Think about this. You know, so but I think we've got a good foundation. So some, some cre uh, key scriptures, and we've got a lot of scriptures to look over in the next week or so. Um, I, Sherry, can I ask you to put these in the chat? Isaiah, uh, some of these may be repeat. Let me check. Okay, these are uh, all in Proverbs. Proverbs 18, 13. So the, what, so the, the uh, scriptures that Sherry just, just posted in the chat are good memory scriptures. These are good, the ones I'm about to give are good, also good memory scriptures, um, but also just, just to kind of study on your own and read on your own, read in proper context. So Proverbs 8, 18, 13, Proverbs 11, 14. I got one more minute, I'm trying to hurry. Proverbs 12, 15. Proverbs 15, 22. Proverbs, 
1920. And the last one is Proverbs 27, 9. So um, let's, uh, let me know if you need any of those repeated, Cherry. Are you good? Do you need me, Cherry? Where are you? Yes, can you repeat? I'm sorry, my screen went out. Oh, no While problem. Typing. Proverbs 11, thir uh, excuse me, 1114, 1215, 1522, 1920, and 279. Okay, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. So um, that's it. Let's uh, close in prayer, but um, and then if you need to jump off, I understand. Laura, I have a quick question. Yes, Thea. On yeah. the ones um, to remember, did you say James for yes. that last one? James 1, 19. Yes, okay. I missed that one. Sorry. Yeah. So, Thank you. Uh, sure. So uh, just a reminder for those who don't know that came on late, I am, uh, I stay on for uh, up to another hour uh, just to answer any questions that you may have on this topic or any topic that you'd like. Um, yeah, I'm happy to do that, and, and it's also time for fellowship and iron sharpening iron and giving giving your thoughts. Um, definitely going to save the chat, and uh, let's go ahead and close in prayer real quick. Lord, I ask you, Father, just to uh, please bless us with with um, any new information that you've given us tonight, that so that we can use it immediately, Father, mm. only as you would lead us. Lord, we, we have a heart to help uh, other women that are going through things because we know uh, how we feel when we're going through things and, and um, we want to be able to seek advice for it. Thank you, Father. Just bless every woman here every uh, and every household represented here. We love you, Lord. We're so thankful for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Amen. Thank you. Good night, Marcy. Uh, Good night. Yeah. Good night, Good everyone. Night. So you can Hello. stay on if you'd like. Yeah, Tretta? Yeah. Good night. I ain't gonna be able to make it tonight. <laughs> okay, no, but you, you, I know you're kind of quiet tonight, Erica. That's all right. That's all right. Well, um, I told you my husband's ill. He's in the hospital again. Yeah. And um. I think and this is a little bit worse this time, even though they're trying not to say that it is. Um, but he, it, it, I know his health. I knew he was going to deteriorate. It's not a surprise. It's just going through it and seeing it happen is rough. So, so let's pray. Can we pray with you for before you? Yes. Mm -hmm. Lord, just uh, lift up Erica's husband, Mr. Day, to you, to you, Father, and we we thank you that nothing mm -hmm. you by surprise. We just ask you, Father, just for your perfect will regarding his healing. We ask you to touch him from the top of his head to the bottom of his, of his feet, Father. Whatever whatever he's going through, you know what it is, Father. Mm -hmm. We just seek you um, to give uh, him favor with doctors, hospital staff, anybody, everybody that uh, housekeeping, anybody and everybody in that hospital that has anything to do with uh, Mr. Day and his, um, his while he's there. Father, we just ask you to move mightily. We know that um, you have the you have the power to do it. We know that you love him. You love his wife, Father, and their family. Um, just ask you to move. We just mm -hmm. ask you to move, and we thank you, Father, for the peace that that surpasses all understanding. Yes, oh, Christ, can we have peace even in the midst of our storms? Mm -hmm. Yes, they're tough to go through, Father, but you know we we just so grateful to you that we can still rejoice because of Christ in our lives, even when we're going through tough times. We lift him up to you, Father. Just give him peace, peace, Father, peace of mind, um, renew or, or enlarge their hope, their, their, um, their confidence in you, Father, their trust in you. We thank you that nothing can separate us from your love, as, as you say in Romans chapter 8. And just just renew Erica's um, her energy, her um, 
her stamina um, and just uh, renew her her mind in terms of the weirdness that she's feeling, Father. Just um, let her light shine through you to her husband and to the hospital staff. Mm -hmm. This is a couple that relies on you. Yeah. That's what we ask for. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Yeah. Good night. Um, Natasha, so where are you calling from, Natasha? If you don't mind sharing. Are you there? Okay. Hi, Jamila. I want to make sure that. Hi. How are you <laughs> today? How are you doing? I'm doing good. Good. That's good. Good, good, good. Okay. So, what questions do we have, if any? Just real quick happy birthday to Caitlin and to April Hi. this month. I know I just missed Caitlin's birthday, and April's coming up on Monday. Okay. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. April. Happy birthday. Yeah. <laughs> So, Caitlin, did you have a nice birthday? I saw your pictures with the fam. Thanks, we did. We went to Chewy's and it was nice. Nice. That's Thanks. Good. And then we had Chewy's again because it was good the first time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, I ain't mad at you, as they say. I'm not mad at you. That's how you do it. <laughs> Enjoy. Yeah. Hey. April, what do you have planned for your birthday? I, you know, I, I'm going to be going to Seattle. So I know that my church family in Seattle, we're going to have some kind of ladies thing. Uh, it'll be fun. And then my Zumba family, we're gonna, <laughs> there'll be a little outdoor Zumba. Which will All be right. Fun. Yeah. Um, and um, let's see, I have a lunch on Friday. You know, I celebrate all month long. So I think on the day which is on Monday, I will spend my time just kind of being quiet and going to the beach. Mm. Nice. The beach in Seattle or where you are? Uh, in LA, Torrance Beach. And I'll probably walk from Torrance to Manhattan, I think. Um, mm -hmm. That's nice. on Monday? Yeah. I oh, that's right. Toretta just moved from Seattle. Oh, that's Toretta. Where were you living in Seattle? Puyallup. Oh, okay. I couldn't pronounce it when I first got there. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. Pull so your that's, lip. <laughs> that's, that's, what, that's where the fair is. So I love exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm near um, Lincoln Park, if you. Um, okay. Yep. That is West Seattle. All right. Okay. Yeah. Nice. So, yeah, you're, you're Seattle, Seattle. Okay. Because I know a lot of people say they're from Seattle yeah. and they're like Eden Claw or somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> you know those names. Federal Way. I'm like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Not quite exactly. Seattle, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like I said earlier, you know, I I just kind of say, give me the give me the big city. Right. Right. If, if it's right. not Southern California, I just don't know. But you know, if I were to say I live in Santa Clarita, California, that means nothing to people. But if I say Greater LA area. Mm -hmm. yeah exactly oh okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah. yeah so okay so uh any questions any i do have a kind of a question comment and it's with um kind of on this topic but more so when you're dealing with people and you realize that 